In this recipe, we're gonna learn how to use our good old bell peppers, yellow, red ones, they're beautiful when the spring or the summer comes, but sometimes we tend to just use them for stir fried and chop or in our ratatouille. But the other thing that's done in the south of France a lot is the stuffed pepper. We're gonna be using a simple recipe that is meat free, which is great if you're vegetarian, but also if you want something a little bit lighter. So the stuffing is based on rice, onion, nuts, herbs, olive oil, tomatoes, plenty of good stuff. But if you never had this kind of stuffed pepper without meat, this is gonna be a welcome addition and a great entry if you're not really used to cook these little beauties right here. Let's go. Now bell peppers are great when they are cut and cubed and stuff like that, but they make also for great containers because they can really take a beating like the aubergine and they can be filled with all sorts of things and then baked. And if you look at this, a screen here, how lovely are these things around, all these colors, you know, you got the mint there, the parsley, we've got some resin, some tomato, garlic, herbs, all the colors, the rice, the onion, we even have like toasted nuts, that's maybe my uh, special touch on there. And this is what we're gonna use to make that recipe. So let's jump straight into the process. As you will see, it's not difficult, but the first thing we need to do, of course, is to cut the peppers. Cutting the bell peppers, a very important step when you make stuffed pepper, the first thing we tend to think, of course, is to remove the end like this, take this off and remove the seeds, then cut in half and you think, oh, I'm gonna have a kind of a cup of a container. But the ribs here, all that part, that, that hardy part plus the stem, is really what holds the whole thing together, especially when it's cooking. So what you need to try to do when you make this stuffed pepper, the best thing is to actually keep, which is an unusual thing, is to keep everything, even a piece of stem on here. Now, as you can see, it's not exactly straight. So I'm gonna try to take a little bit off like that, okay? And what I'm gonna try to do here is to find an angle and be able to cut like this my bell pepper with the stem and everything intact like that, okay? This is what we want. And from here, I'm gonna use, for instance, a little, a little spoon or anything like that. And I'm gonna gently remove the seeds first by grating everything gently. And then using another knife, let's say, I'm gonna take your little knife and we're gonna remove the ribs as we do. And very gently carve our way in like this as well from inside the pepper without disturbing anything else. The one, of course, seeds off, okay? So I'm gonna clean the whole thing, make it nice and neat, and make some nice container, and I want four of those. And here we are. So this is what you should have when you are done. Very, very important to keep the whole intact. And do not rush, but with your knife, trying to go too fast, because if you break something, if something goes open, it's really gonna fall apart. So that's what you see here, having the stem and everything all together like that, is what you want. Now I've added a few extras because I've realized my papers were really small, but at the end of the day, you want these little containers all like that, okay? For the pre-cooking, we're gonna start by putting the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty oven. And we're gonna coat the insides of the shell and the outside with a brushing a brushing of olive oil. Doesn't have to be perfect, okay? You can go and remove the excess of the oil and you know, pour it into another container. If you got too much, you got the gist. And you take the peppers everywhere, leave it in there, leave it on the outside, leave it on the inside. You don't need much. That's just a coating and then some seasoning. Now, of course, if you got something against brushes, you can use your hand and you can massage everything by hand with the oil as long as your hands are clean. It's a bit therapeutic huh, to use your hand at the end of the day. Sometimes always use ten salt and stuff. The good old hands always work. A bit of salt, a bit of pepper. And as soon as the oven is done, we're gonna cook this or pre-cook this for 15 minutes. As soon as your peppers are in the oven, you got 15 minutes and 15 minutes is the time we need to cook the onions. This is based on onions, onions reduce, and they take a long time to cook, so medium heat. And we're gonna start to cook them in olive oil, about a tablespoon and a half, for a good 10 minutes. You don't want to burn anything. Eh? So, medium heat, no burning. 
After 10 minutes, this is what I've got. This is a slight, slight color. I'm gonna add my garlic. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or two. I'm leaving some of the toasted nuts in there. And then fry the whole thing or cook the whole thing for a minute. You don't want to burn the garlic, I just want to keep it fragrant. After a minute or so, I am done. This is what I've got, this is what you should have as well. It's a simple onion, garlic, and nuts mixture. I've roasted the nuts, but like I say, you can just use blanched almond and chop them and that will be fine as well. So turn the heat off and then take the peppers out. Here we are, the peppers are out and if you can see, there's a little bit of water has been rendered and the stem here really hold the whole thing together. Otherwise, like this one, it can start to flop a little bit. So this is very important. I'm gonna scoop these out and transform them to a baking tray, a cold baking tray in preparation for the stuffing. So just to give you an idea, I'm using a baking dish that can go in the oven, of course, and I'm leaving some space in between the paper halves in here. You don't want to overcrowd things. My papers are ready in the baking dish. My oven is still on at the same temperature, and now we're doing the stuffing. I've transferred the mixture of onions and everything in here, and it is really an assembly game. What I like to do, to put all of the wet stuff there, I put the sultana in here. I'm gonna add by adding some of the parsley. I like to judge by kind of, you know, with the eye like this. Uh, rice is good, but sometimes it can make things a little dry. So you want to balance out uh, the, you know, the, the amount of dry ingredients compared to the amount of, of wet ones. You don't want to end up with something with just rice, if you know what I mean, okay? Now, if you want, you can add more tomatoes, it's up to you. I don't like to be too but my attach here, I love to add always a little bit of smoked paprika. I always do this because it adds, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil in there. It really adds a little bit of color, but that's kind of smokiness in these guys, in any of these baked and, you know, stuffed vegetables. It's always a kind of a good addition. And, you know, it just feels great with the pepper has been in the oven to have like kind of a a smoky flavor and you know that's about it we're gonna have stuffing i'm giving it a shot let's try it out take a bit of sultana mm. oh the mint it's french but we have salt i think we're good to go let's stuff the peppers okay so i've got my stuffing on here on the side in a bowl and i'm taking a spoon and carefully we're gonna try to fill this paper one by one Okay, you don't want to spill too much of that stuffing on the side, but you also don't want to overfill the peppers. That's something I've been doing before and it doesn't cook properly. You want to actually just keep it nice. Keep it a nice balance of, you know what? I want some pepper, but I want some stuffing as well, but not too much. Otherwise it's only stuffing, less pepper. You know what I mean? It's like in you know, the balance that you feel you are eating a, a pepper and a bit of stuffing. When you're done, this is the look you want. Sometimes you want a little space, a little gap in between. And we're gonna put this in the oven for the first 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we're gonna take them out, see how it goes, add some of the nuts to have that kind of roasted little look on there, but without burning the nuts, and perhaps add a bit of oil if needed. But the most important before you put this in the oven is a bit of water, okay? At the bottom of your dish. So I've, I've got some cold water in here, you can take warm water. Not too much, it's to just to avoid that the pepper starts to stick at the bottom and burn and you want some steam to cook the whole thing, okay? So that goes straight into the oven first for 20 minutes. Ideally, you want to reduce your temperature to 190 Celsius and little reminder, it is always fan forced, okay? After about 20 minutes time, you're gonna take your dish and you're gonna check, you see it's getting dry but that's all right, I don't want it to stick, but so far it's good. And what we're gonna do here is a little trick that I'm doing. You can put breadcrumbs on top if you want to have something a bit gold. But what I'm using now, it's almond meal. They are blanched almond that are ground into a, a, a powder like kind of thing. So sometimes it's easier by hand, but what you want is a sprinkle on top of each, okay? And if you want, you can add some extra uh, nuts, if you have roasted nuts. The almond meal or the ground almonds really add that nuttiness to the whole thing. It adds character and it's really not a bad addition at all. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of water and then back in the oven again, same thing to finish the cooking. But before, a tiny drizzle of olive oil on, the, on that almond meal 
And that's it. So 20 minutes extra maximum until everything is cooked nice and golden. Top. It's gonna look great. Let's go. Here we are! The little stuffed pepper are out of the oven and I think the almond meal has started to brown but not so much but that's how it looks like. Now the most important thing I want to show you here is the stems. You see how deep thing is? They're trying to collapse but it's really the stems and that end bit that holds the whole thing together. So if you've been struggling with making these stuffed pepper because the others like flop and become really flat, well, leaving a stamp is really the key. Now, when it's on the table, again, it's up to you. You can add some little, uh, you know, uh, parsley. I've got some extra nuts on here. You can, you know, you can fancy things up a little bit with some extra herbs, some extra dishes. You can serve it on a, on a serving tray. I'm just leaving everything in the dish to show you how it is raw out of the oven but this is the dish. Now, if you want to go further and you want to kind of freestyle, you can add some, uh, maybe some pork mince, some chicken mince in there. You can add some different herbs, try different nuts. Even the, you know, coriander might be an interesting twist. Or what about pistachios? And there's plenty of little things you can do and you can twist to make this recipe your own. So the best thing is to try it. Remember, if you've got some peppers at home, being the green one, the yellow one, or the red one, you can use that stuffing, and trust me, it's a really good one. I'm not gonna try that because it's gonna mess things up, so I'm gonna leave you with this beautiful picture on the screen of how the final dish can look like, and definitely, if you make it, tell me all about it. Bye-bye.